We um, were from Ireland. We met um, nearly 15 years ago in um, Oshin used to work in a bar and um, I went to the bar for my friend's 18th birthday party and um, that's, he was actually off that night but that's how we met and um, it's all yeah. led to this. It's all led to right here where we are, yeah. But um, I can't remember what the other question was. <laughs> so it's a very Irish story to meet in the bar. Yes, <laughs> well, we would say pub, yeah, met me in the local pub. <laughs> I suppose, um, I suppose Laura's health essentially is the issue, is why we had to go down the surrogacy route. Um, I suppose with her, she's diabetic and I suppose she has other complications. So um, I suppose to have a child, the safest way that for us to have a child uh, without compromising either Laura's health or um, the child's health um, was to go down the surrogacy route. So. Mm -hmm. We spoke to multiple specialists, obviously, before we, we came to the, you know, the path of surrogacy. It wasn't just, here's my health, I don't really feel like compromise and that kind of a thing. We, we saw a lot of doctors to see was there a way that we could have, you know, avoided this path. But um, no, that was, that was it. They just said, no, that's it's not feasible. I suppose I'll answer that one because I was the one left in charge of the research. Yeah. Um, so September 2019, I decided to, we decided to go ahead and I started research. And so I had interviewed 10 agencies and um, we had chosen one. It was actually a month before we were to leave to go to that agency where I decided that no, I wasn't going to that agency anymore. I just got a really bad feeling. And um, it was around November time because growing families were having um, a thingamabopper, those things that they have. And on the list of the agencies were World Centre of Baby and Victoria Vita. So I said, oh, I've not heard of them. I haven't messaged them yet. I'll send an email. So I sent an email and Olga um, obviously picked up my email from World Centre of Baby and um, we started chatting. And I just felt like when I was talking to Olga, I just felt like I knew that if I gave this job to Olga and World Centre of Baby, that regardless of how it happened and when it happened and the whole thing going around, that it would it would be done. You know, we had that confidence. And the day we signed our contracts here, um, I slept like a baby that night. It was like a whole weight had lifted off my shoulders. This anxiety and this because you know we had met Vladislav in person we had met Olga and the whole English department at that stage which was much smaller now then than it is now and um, we just felt very confident in our decision then yeah it was really good. We really appreciate the trust that you gave us obviously mm -hmm. to help you to create that. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much I'm gonna I might start crying a little bit. <laughs> <through this. laughs> we, we, um, before we left Ukraine um, our egg donor had already started stimulation and our surrogate was already being um, lined up. Well. Lined up. They, they mm -hmm. do something with the hormones, the medical part, no idea. But whatever happens, <laughs> that's what they were doing. <laughs> so it was, it was pretty fast moving, yeah. Laura, Laura is, I think I would describe as great friends now with our Yeah, Diana. we um, we were great friends. So we we waited until twelve weeks, you know, to make sure because we had um, our journey was a little bit of a roller coaster, and um, our surrogate was actually our fourth surrogate, um, between the jigs and the reels anyway. So we decided to wait until the twelve week mark to. Um, you know, talk to her this time. Now we had made it clear to World Centre of Baby that we wanted a surrogate that was open to communication. Didn't have to be a lot of communication, just um, that thing. Now they advise, you know, you don't have direct communication for multiple reasons, which you understand, but um, as long as everybody consents to it, um, it's it's easy to, to achieve. So um, I texted Yana at 12 weeks and I just said, um, it's Laura because obviously she, she knew my name. And um, I said, there's there's no pressure. If you want to communicate with me through the agency, just whatever you want to say, tell um, Daria, who was our coordinator. And she sent me back a message and she said um, she didn't mind communicating and um, 
that she wanted to get to know us so that she would be comfortable that we would you know that she is bringing the baby into the world for us so um we we um would communicate then once or twice a week and um, as the pregnancy progressed we got um more communication and then when we were in ukraine for the birth we met her at um, saint sophia and we had tea and we had a right chat um we used viber because obviously language barrier yeah and um it's funny there's a funny story because Around week 13, we were talking about the baby and I said, what do you think the baby is? And of course, you know, from our gender reveal, we were convinced we were having a girl, yeah. right? And Yana sent me a message and she said, I had a dream before I became a surrogate that I was going to have a baby boy. Mm. And this is week 13, so there's no way anybody would have known this. And um, I was like, hmm, interesting. Still convinced it was a girl, 100% convinced it was a girl, weren't we? Yeah. Oh, we were, we were convinced. And then it came out as a boy. And um, we were I was like, Jesus, she knew, she knew. And then three weeks ago, she sent me a message and she said, I dreamt of raspberries and that I gave birth to a boy with big, big, big eyes. And I was like, so the raspberries apparently meant that her labor was going to be not difficult. Uh -huh. okay. Yes, so we're right. To yeah. Decipher some interesting <laughs> dreams. Right yes. Here. And um, he was born and he had big, wide, open eyes. And I was like, this one is onto something. That's magical powers. <laughs> she, <laughs> has, she has mad powers, that one. <laughs> that is so lovely to hear. Mm -hmm. So when, when surrogates become almost like extended family mm -hmm. through this experience, mm -hmm. and it's great that you had this experience with the surrogate and yeah. you remain friends. Have you decided that you're going to keep in contact with this lady in the future? Oh, I, I, I think since Christopher yeah. was born, which is just over two weeks now, I think Laura and Yana have been in contact more or less every day. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we, um, we speak every day and um, obviously you know we've signed our sibling contract and um, Yana has agreed that if she passes all her tests and she's healthy enough to go again that she'll um, be surrogate for our next baby. Nice, nice. Yeah. So are you planning for the second somewhere? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just the line. Somewhere. Me, I, feel, I feel a bit scared. So maybe I need to get a bit of rest to get my together. <laughs> I suppose, I suppose um, at the start of it, one thing uh, Laura um, mentioned to Olga was like, you know, we want clarity and just be straight up with us. If we ask a question, just give us a straight answer. And I suppose Olga held her promise in that regard and everyone else in the World Centre Baby did that and communication was always clear for anything we ever wanted or asked. Yeah, so in, uh, when you speak to a lot of agencies, um, there's, there's one thing that you need to be and that's transparent. And I found with some agencies, they were immediately knocked off my list because I found either their documentation um, unclear, their process unclear, something ambiguous about, you know, what was going on. But I said to Olga in one of my first emails to her, Olga, if the news is good, bad, if you can't give us something that we want, we can discuss it. But the one thing I need from you is honesty and clarity at all times. And um, she held her promise and she stayed with it. Um, the Ukrainian process in itself is very straightforward, I find. So basically they have the legislation that makes it very easy. So I'm his mother from the time he's conceived until um, he's born and after. Um, a little bit difficult at home, but um, in Ukraine it's very clear. The surrogate is protected by um, the law. Um, she was very well looked after by World Centre of Baby. She, um, when Olga was with us after the birth, she wanted me to know how well she was looked after, so she told Olga. Um, now she um, also told me herself after the birth because while she was while she was pregnant, I um, said I didn't want to talk about either the agency or the medical side because things can get in translation mixed up. Um, because I found that, that with people who had direct contact and there'd be issues, that that was where the issues kind of came into play. But she told us that she was very, very happy with the care and um, the dedication from the team and she loved her... Um... So Tatiana... Yes, yes. Yeah. yes. Tatiana is her... a very lovely lady, she looks after all And it's, it's so lovely to hear, you know, the mm -hmm. actual feedback yeah. from surrogate mothers, which is yeah. positive. She was, and she said that, um, because obviously when we were going for a sibling journey and, and we were talking about it, we said to her, was she happy with World Centre of Baby? Was she comfortable to go again with World Centre of Baby? And she had absolutely no, no issues about it at all. Lovely to hear. So, yeah. Yeah. 
was a bit of a fur it was a bit of a kerfluffle i suppose yeah. you better put that out there right i don't know if you remember this igor but i remember yeah we got very very clear positive urine tests or rapid tests, mm -hmm. if anyone's doing surrogacy, that's what the, the agency will call it. Uh, not a urine test, but a rapid test. Um, and then we got a blood test, and um, I don't know if Olga's told you about my vibes, but I had a really clear vibe that something had happened to that blood yeah. test. I said to Anna, I was like, Anna, they've lost that test. Uh, because it was three days and we hadn't got the results, and that was very unusual mm -hmm. for World Centre of Baby because normally they'd have it the same day or the next day. And I said to Anna, I have a feeling they've lost that test. And Anna goes, no, they couldn't have lost the test. And I was like, she is um, optimistic, right? So we waited anyway, and the test came back negative. So you didn't want to put high hopes at first? Yeah. No, and okay. then Dr. Olga said, there's no way, there's no way it's negative. She said, those urine tests are the sensitivity has to be at least over mm -hmm. and the blood test was nowhere near what the, the sensitivity of the urine test was. Don't understand it, but that's the situation. <laughs> and um, they sent Diana for another test, which was on Saturday the 20th of February. And so we, yes, we were told it could be Monday and we understood that. Anna made it quite clear it might be Monday, so don't get excited about a test result today. And then Anna's name came up on my phone at about four o'clock Irish time on the Saturday and my heart was beating out of my chest and Anna just screamed down the phone she's pregnant <laughs> and I was in the hallway and I had her on speaker and oh she was getting ready to go for a walk with the dogs and he ran into the hallway and I started to cry and oh she was like should I ask grand then <laughs> <laughs> That's a very male thing to say, <laughs> in this situation. I, I guess... Yeah, I suppose, uh, everyone mentioned there, I suppose their parents would have been... Um, yeah, our parents. Yeah, always inquiring and... Yeah. Um, they knew everything that was going on, I suppose, the whole time. And um, Olga. Olga would have been my biggest um, support, like when I was having... I, I, I'm not... I'm not a person who gets um, worked up easy, am I? No. I'm not a person who gets like anxious or you know mad, and you know. But if I was having having a moment, um, I'd text Olga and I'd be like, okay, this is this is what's going through my head. What do you make of it? <laughs> and she'd come back and she'd tell me, listen, totally understand where you're coming from, but that is not what's happening here. So and then obviously I run. Um, a WhatsApp support group for um, intended parents in Ireland and they would be a massive support to me and um, we're a support to each other I suppose so um, even if you're you're just having a bad day and you're you're your dog at your sock or whatever and you want to just you know let that out there you can put it up there and everyone will just rally around you and make you feel better and um, our parents and my my mom and dad my dad was so excited my um, my mom is so excited. Um, I can't imagine they can't wait to see. Yeah, to see him. Um, Oshin's Osh Prince. Oshin's brother and his wife. They are just <laughs> dying to see him, yeah. and they would have been a very big support to us through the whole thing. And um, waiting for every single transfer in the two week wait with us, lighting candles. That's a very Irish thing to do. Uh, if you're having a problem, light candle. <laughs> Uh, making me tea every fail they'd be there and they'd be um helping me out and then olga our second was it our no our third fail last october she sent me over with um one of my other friends shabana a package of russian chocolate because i i'm addicted I remember that. to we russian chocolate <laughs> <laughs> and she was like here have some russian chocolate to make you feel better so um, yeah, just little things like that, or even just messages. And when we had our second fail, Olga and Anna called us instead of sending the, the usual email or text. We really appreciated that because, you know, sometimes it's hard to hear it over email or text. I'll let, let you tell about your mom and dad. What did they act like? <laughs> he doesn't remember now. So Oshin's a real, He's a real um, simple kind of guy, right? So everything's done real simply. There's no big show, no mad 
freaking fiasco or whatever. So he just walked into his mother one morning. Do you remember what you said to her? Oh yeah, he said, uh, what did I say? He said, how about you fix for an extra uh, mouth at the, for Christmas dinner? I think something to that effect, yeah, was it? Yeah, an extra mouth for Christmas dinner. How cryptic, right? <laughs> cryptic is that. And um, his mom kind of sat there for a minute and she was trying to figure out what was he saying. And she was like, what? And he's like, yeah, there'll be an extra mouth there now, Christmas dinner. Second so name, really? yeah, second name Goggin, first name unknown, because we didn't know if we were having a boy or a girl or what we were having at this stage. And uh, she was so happy, she um, shed a few tears. And his dad is a bit like, oh, she's very, you know, oh, sure, that's grand. <laughs> my mom, I'm a bit more extra. So um, my mom, it was Mother's, just a few weeks after Mother's Day, and um, I, had, I had purposely not given her a Mother's Day present. I said, oh, I'm waiting for something to come. Because we wanted it to be about nine or 10 weeks before we told him because you know, mm -hmm. all the Again, bits, yeah. yeah. And um, I wrapped up this um, baby vest that said, we don't know if it's a he or a she, all we know is your grandparents to be. And I handed it to my mom and I said, oh, here's your Mother's Day present. And when she took it out for a minute, she was like, didn't really get it. And then she, she got it and she started laughing so uncontrollably. Okay. <laughs> she couldn't, she couldn't. That's an reaction. <laughs> yeah, she couldn't stop. And then she ran up to the living room and she was showing my dad. And of course it took my dad a few minutes to figure it out. And then she had to video call my sister and show my sister and everyone then. So everyone got involved afterwards. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and my brother, my brother is, um, uh, he has cerebral palsy, he's in a wheelchair, so he, he, he doesn't have the mental comprehension of, of an adult. But um, my mom and dad only told him when we came to Kiev to pick up the baby mm -hmm. that we were bringing home a baby. Mm -hmm. And now every call we make, every video call, he's like, let me see the baby. Where's the baby? When are you bringing home the baby? <laughs> he's so funny. We knew from previous, um, from talking to previous people, what the hospital was going to be like, look, and it was is what it is like. It was clean, modern, was modern. Um, the, I suppose any medical staff we encountered in there, between nurses or doctors, look, they were all good to us. Um, we wouldn't have any. Um, we don't have any complaints about it. No. That's great because I think some intended parents obviously they're kind of used to a super modern maybe uh, breaking hospitals yeah. if they've been. But I think the, the good thing about those hospitals they're really trained staff because they have so many births per day and they're so kind of mm -hmm. but the only thing you know I would advise them is be more human and just you know understand that it's not experience like bored, go away, yeah. or go yeah. away. It's um Yana as well, she had said that she was very impressed with the staff. Um, during the birthing process because um, Olga had to leave me on my own because COVID restrictions, mm -hmm. the red zone came in around that time and um, it was just me, Yana and her mid midwives, or I, I don't really know who was who but there was people <laughs> and um, they were they were kind of talking to her and Ukrainian when it's spoken sometimes can sound a little bit harsh. Oh yeah. Is that the way to see that? It? Yeah. I think Russian sounds even harsher, but mm -hmm. Ukrainian, uh, someone told me it's like rewinding. <laughs> it, and I was like, oh my God, there's there's shouting going on. And I was texting and I was like, there's something happening. There's shouting going on. And she was like, no, it's probably just the, the language. Don't, don't worry about it. And then when she came up after the birth and she was talking to Yana, she said, I'll ask Yana. So she asked Yana, and Yana said, "Oh no, they were they were encouraging me, encouraging me. It wasn't it wasn't." So it was like you go, girl. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> I I was there for the birth. I at one point I thought I was going to faint <laughs> because you know it's all very um, and I had like sixteen layers of clothes on, and then this whole layer of like scrubs and the heat was just like unreal but um he 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 was being born anyway and um i think when when i when i saw his head coming out i got this like wave over my body and i just started crying i just cried cried and then um he i mean he was born in like two or three pushes and then he was just out and then he just let out like one cry and then he was lying on the little table and then he was just not bad on him, looking around, minding his own business, just chilling. But um, it was sort of like, um, 
I cried and I was so happy and then I was like so sad and then I was like yeah, everything. And you, and you just go into overdrive mode and you don't understand what's what going on. Yeah, and I was shaking the adrenaline. I was, I was shaking. I was almost afraid to hold him because I was shaking that much. I, I'm, um. I'm sure you're quite also scared to hold him. Sure. Because I was so scared when they put it on me and I, I his little neck and I yeah. don't know what to do. Yeah. And, and would you actually recommend for it maybe in the future for intended parents to get maybe some courses, you know, for the first couple of days of what to expect? Because again, mm -hmm. I'm, some intended parents do their due diligence and kind of understand and we have mm -hmm. some intended parents that are very new to this. So. Uh, um, yes, so I did a course mm -hmm. before we came over um, in Ireland um, from a midway free team. They, they do like a, a course for neonatal type mm -hmm. things. Um, so bathing, swaddling, care, you know, all that kind of thing. And um, I would definitely recommend it because it's very overwhelming that that tiny human, uh, he relies on you or she for absolutely every single thing. So feeding, changing, you have to kind of know, well, he's not hungry, so what is he? He's not got wind, so what's going on? Why is he crying? So it's all about um, kind of adjusting to him. And it's also, I think, a lot about, you know, not panicking and using your intuition because you do have it, you know, that learn the cues from the baby. That's another thing that my cousin's a midwife and, and um, she, she gave me um, some advice. And then my friends, obviously, who have all had children said that, you know, with a baby, it's all about learning their cues. Yeah. What, what they, like, he's a certain cry when he's hungry. He's a certain cry when he's got wind. He's a certain cry when he needs his nappy changed. And, um, it's just all about so that. So even though uh, the experience was helpful, it's still about adjusting to your child and yeah. his needs. Yes. Yeah. The, 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 so the intuition course is works, yeah. listen, communicate. Mm -hmm. yeah. Definitely. I'm not going to say it was slightly better, but was, I suppose we had more freedom is what I'm trying to say, because at the minute, like, you know, with COVID restrictions, mm -hmm. and look, I suppose we'd be very wary yeah. of bringing Christopher into places as well, like, like say, now with COVID, so. I guess we'll have to adjust to yeah. the new world of COVID-19. Yeah. Um, the first visit we were, it was a completely different visit as well because we didn't have a baby and it was all very exciting and we were getting this thing done and we came over then and it, as Oshin said with the COVID restrictions and obviously the fear of COVID and then with my health problems and a newborn you're, you're not, you don't feel comfortable kind of mm -hmm. in gatherings of people or whatever but we, we have definitely walked the length and breadth of the city of Kiev. Oh yeah, we've uh, the yeah. car we rented is a is a. It's a nearly needs new tires at this what? stage. <laughs> <It's not. laughs> yeah, so we've we've done a lot of walking, so we've seen a lot of like the architecture and the buildings and the you know the touristy spots, um, which are all beautiful. It's a beautiful city. Would you say Kiev is dangerous, or because you know some some parents, especially when they don't know of Ukraine, it sounds yeah. a little bit. Post Soviet Union -y and a bit scary. Would you say it's dangerous? Where you felt? We've never. I, I've never felt. I've never felt um, unsafe. The one. The one thing that would probably would would find a bit unsafe is you know those underground walking tunnels mm -hmm. in the middle of the night because there's there's not very good lighting in them. Like yeah. <laughs> you know they. I, I don't think they, they think that people actually walk into the village so sort of in them until it just yeah. goes away. Some of them are great, they've got the little underground malls and all in them, but <laughs> some of them are like a bit yeah. like I can't yeah. even see I have visual problems and I'm like I can't even see where I'm going so, like uh, yeah. advice, try to avoid the sketchy little tunnels. Yes, yeah. yeah, so, <laughs> some of them. Some of them are great. Some of them not so good. Um, I suppose the biggest thing, like Laura said, is do we research? Mm -hmm. Have a good idea what you're getting into. Not only for Ukraine surrogacy, but also your home country. It's quite complex in Ireland. When we get home, we have like a lengthy legal situation to to take on before um, Oshin is recognised as the father and sole guardian. Mm -hmm. And then me, it, it, it can take years. So, I mean, definitely know your home country and um, obviously the ins and outs of Ukraine. I mean, a lot of, I, I find that um, 
with intended parents, the cultural, I want to say cultural difference, you know, just when there's different countries, you know, there's different ways to communicate, different ways to, to think things. So the language barrier and the cultural differences, just take them in your stride. I mean, it's, it's just, you know, if you're going to another country, when in Rome, yeah. you know, and another thing I'd say to them is uh, just, just do it. I mean, Walt Disney has a quote, um, all your dreams can come true if you just have the courage to pursue them. So for us, we always wanted to be parents and when we found the opportunity we just i well i was doing the research or she was quite happy to let me figure it out i just jumped right in i didn't sit back and i didn't think about the what ifs or the you know what could happen or whatever i just i found an agency that i could trust and i knew then whatever happened that i was it was going to be okay i mean we had three failures three egg donors, um, four surrogates. We had COVID, we had three clinics. I mean, we had a real a real run around, but... Um, we got there in the we, end. We, we got there, but we, we the, the point I'm trying to make is because we had chosen an agency that we were comfortable with and that we felt we could trust, none of that really, I mean, we were, we of course we're upset when you get fails, but we never felt like, we'd made the wrong decision, no. did we? No, because no. I suppose, even with fails, look, it's, it's down to science, essentially. So Nature. You can't, you, really can't, you, can't, you can't, no one can say, this transfer is going to be successful. No. So, um, look, even with the fails, I suppose, um, as Laura said, uh, Olga and everyone else sort of, they were clear with us, and look, the our next transfer, our next step was always fairly uh, quickly yeah, after. We always, we always knew what was coming next, like once we had a fail, and. Um, we were ready so to move So you never gave up hope and you always had the information in order to sustain oh, a yeah. kind of more comfortable yeah. journey. Yeah. Well, I suppose like, um, say we're Irish, so say, um, say if another Irish couple has mm -hmm. been through the agency, like, you know, and they've had, a, I suppose, a successful um, journey, um, I suppose that sort of gives us a bit of confidence. Uh, so prior IPs been through the same agency. Now that that would, uh, we say that now, but I think we're the first Irish IPs that signed with World Centre of Baby. Mm, I'll have to check with Olga. Um, yeah. because we were Olga's first IPs, mm -hmm. and I'm pretty sure we were the first Irish as well. And um, because nobody. Yes, I think we only had some. Uh, well, the closest that some Irish mm -hmm. IPs. But yeah. I think you were yeah. the first Irish couple. Um, yeah. so we say that now, but. <laughs> That was not the case when I um, when I chose because the agency that we originally chose, all Irish people use them, and I didn't like them. Um, but another indicator would be ethics, and the way I found that you can you can figure that out is um, in the paperwork. Mm -hmm. So, an agency, for instance, I'll just give you a quick example so that people know what I'm mm -hmm. trying to say. Um, we contacted an agency and they um, asked for, you have to give a letter about your medical, because of mm -hmm. course in Ukraine you have to have a medical problem, or you know, four failed IVFs, and um, our marriage certificate. Um, the marriage certificate didn't have to be legalized, and the- To start the program. To start the program. And the medical letter was, um, the first medical letter I sent to them was quite vague, mm -hmm. right? And so I, there was not a specific reason to yeah. find the- yeah. So that made me a little bit like, hmm, because when I contacted Olga, my medical letter had to be detailed. It had to be signed by my doctor, not electronically, but actual physically. And he had to stamp it with a wet stamp so that you could see on the other side of the page mm -hmm. so that they knew it was definitely him. But some people get discouraged, you know, when we ask them to fill like 500 different lists, which is, <laughs> which is excellent to know. So yes. the more questions they ask, the more... Yeah, the more paperwork they're looking for, the more likely they are that they're following the rules. And I mean, it's, it's, it, there's some very, very sketchy agencies out there. I mean, I think people know that. Yeah, but um, I, that's one thing I would tell you. If the more paperwork they're asking for, the the better ethics that they've got, and um, also communication. So um, and transparency. So if you ask 
if you ask Olga a question, she, whether the, you're going to like the answer or not, she's going to tell you what the answer is and that's it. And I liked that about it, Olga because she wasn't trying to please me. She was trying to give me the information so that I could make an informed decision. Um, whereas I found with other agencies, they'd give me the answers that I yeah, wanted to hear. But when I'd go through the paperwork, because I have a background in obviously law, the contract and what they were telling me would not match up to the same thing, which also is something to look out for if you're researching. And um, just a general, your general gut, that's, I mean, at the end of the day, your gut will tell you whether this is the right fit for you or not. Your gut will say, well, no, I'm not really, I'm not really comfortable with this or yeah, I think this is the right one. And that's, that's another big factor, listening to exactly what you need. I mean, every agency is not going to sue every IP. So it's just a matter of finding the one that will suit you. Sorry, right? <laughs> yes. Maybe we can Do you want to get them? Say hello to you, <laughs> I have one last question mm -hmm. about what you think a world center maybe. Maybe Christopher can fill in. <laughs> I know. Felix is when I, I I mean how was Felix ever that do, do you want to answer that question? <laughs> huh? Do you want to tell him what you think? Tell Igor what you think. Is he as happy as Larry now? Oh no, he's not gonna be happy now in a second. Why? <laughs> is he making that face? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so guys, maybe we should um, just quick mention yeah. what you think about our agency because we don't want to. Do you want me to hold him? Well, no. Oh hold on. Oh, he's got a stomach cramp. Um, this is all this, this is what we, this, is the, this was the, I'm not going to say product, but um, end result of um, yeah. our journey. So look, um, the agency has been great to us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we couldn't be happier with this lad. So, um, and we couldn't be happier with the care our surrogate got and the care we got. And, you know, we've made some lifelong friends here, as you know yourself. So I mean, it's been it's been really good, and obviously I think the proof of it is in the pudding. We've already signed our paperwork to go again with World Centre Baby because we found them. Sorry, great. And um, Christopher is in agreement. That's his I agree cry. So um, yeah, we're 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 really. I I mean, I think I think our whole interview just. We'll just show you how much we like World thank, Centre Baby. Thank you for all the lovely words and we wish you from our whole team you know, good luck with your beautiful baby boy thank and you. we'll be happy to see you uh, next time.